Hello, members of the SAC community. I'm really excited about uh, our SAC Today show, and this is the first one. To be seen by students, of course, staff, faculty, uh, parents, past parents, old boys. Really hope you enjoy it. It's going to be fun. Thank you. Good morning, St. Andrews, and welcome to the first episode of SAC Today. I'm Turun Sethi. And I'm Ayo Ogun Rami. And we are your hosts for Friday, November 6th. We hope you'll enjoy the stories we've been working on this term as we document life from St. Andrews for the 2015 to 16 academic year. We've got a bit of everything for you in this first episode. Student life, athletics, arts, so sit back and enjoy. Our first story takes us back in time to Victorian England and the world of Charles Dickens. Oliver Twist, a story of pickpockets and poverty, camaraderie and daring, fortune and love, will be the first full production in the New Worth Theatre. The cast and crew have been rehearsing almost every night since the early fall under the guidance of Mr. Schooler. With a preview of what to expect, here are Harry Kai and Gary Wang. This year's fall play is Oliver, a musical based on Charles Dickens' iconic novel, Oliver Twist. We asked the director, Mr. Schooler, and some of the cast about the production. So one of the reasons why I did all of this, because I was in the play 50 years ago, and it was still, to this day, is one of the greatest experiences of, of my life. Um, I'll never forget being uh, in the show, and I wanted to give our boys at the school the same kind of experience, so that hopefully, 50 years from now, they'll be whistling uh, the tunes from the show. Um, growing up, my, me and my family watched a ton of musicals, was like one of them, Oliver, of course. Um, it's just so, just like I've, I've always loved the show. Honestly, Mr. Schooler is an amazing director. Like he treats us as professionals, and it's a professional show. So he, since he treats us as professionals, he expects us to be professional, and from that, you get a professional caliber show. There, there, there's somebody else, and just, just take that. Go, in, go into the show and suspend your disbelief and pretend you don't know anyone who's in the show and just enjoy the show for what it is. Okay. Yeah, we put a lot of hard work in it and I think um, in November there will be an amazing show. Our boys are the best. The audience is going to have the time of their lives. Um, the great thing about this show is the music. Um, the play's about two hours and 20 minutes and there's about an hour's worth of music. And it's, I mean, some of the best songs ever written for the theater. Um, so I think uh, people will, be, will leave the theatre asking for more. You know, Oliver says at the beginning, please sir, can I have some more? Well, audience will want more of this show, I think. You'll have a chance to see Oliver during a matinee performance the week of November 25th. But if you'd like to check out Oliver at one of the evening performances on November 26th, 27th and 28th, you'll need to purchase tickets online through the school's website. Rehearsals begin in earnest this week for one of the most important Andrew traditions of the year. As you start practicing the Dorset Carol, Amazing Grace and O Come Holy Faithful, plans are underway to turn what we know as a carol service into an Andrew Christmas, a familiar tradition with a twist happening in a, an exciting new venue. Jason Lee and Victor Shi have more. This year's carol service has been moved to a bigger stage in Roy Thompson Hall and has been renamed an Andrew Christmas. Students and teachers are looking forward to the spectacular holiday show on December 11th. The demand for this show is extremely high as 1,500 tickets have been sold. Student rehearsals is underway. See you all there. Think about the carol service, I think back to when I first came here at St. Andrews about 14 years ago now and how moved I was by the whole experience of the carol service. It's a tradition at St. Andrews. It doesn't go back to the origins of the school, but um, it's certainly been here for many decades. I was a senior this year. I'm really looking forward to uh, an Andrew and Christmas this year. Uh, not only is it being hosted at Roy Thompson Hall, an even bigger uh, uh, stadium, but it's also uh, one of my, my last carol service. 
Uh, so it's one of the last times that uh, the graduating class and the whole school are, be, are going to be able to connect as brothers. We used to be at a church and we've outgrown the church. In fact, in the last couple of years, we've had over 200 people standing. So now we are moving away from a church service to a concert venue. Concert hall, best concert venue in all of Toronto. It is going to be more of a show than a concert. The drama department is collaborating with the music department for a spectacular and a great way to kick off the season. Able to move to the better location is going to give us a greater show, and it's also going to be great in the in the coming years once I'm a graduate, just to be able to come back and and experience the show because I feel like the entertainment value of uh, an Andrew and Christmas as opposed to the Carol service is going to be hundred times better. And now to the turf field and a profile of a new face on campus this year. Throughout the football season, Adre Simmons has been a dominant force at running back, helping his team to a second place finish after regular season play. Nick Grossi and I tell us more about Simmons the person, on and off the field. This may look like an ordinary football locker, but this particular locker belongs to one of the newest additions to St Andrews and the Varsity Saints football team, Adre Simmons. Simmons is the starting running back for the team. He has amassed over 1,500 all-purpose yards and scored 23 touchdowns in seven games. Incredible stats for anyone at any level. This September, he began his first year at St Andrews after being scouted from his hometown of Halifax, Nova Scotia. This is Adre's first time living so far away from his family. Uh, priorities number one for me is family. You know, they're always there for me. They come to a lot of my, like, they try to come to as many games up here as they can, knowing they live from Halifax, Nova Scotia. So when they try, the opportunity comes, they come up here, they're always the first ones up here. Even though they're not here, they're still cheering me on, messaging me on the last day in close contact. So family be number one priority for me. So how does your family feel after you move so far away? Uh, it was hard at first, but uh, they're moving on. You know, they FaceTime me, they do whatever they can. They stay in contact with me, I stay in contact with them. It's not as hard now, like I feel fine. I'm in close with my brothers now at St. Andrews, so it's good. Simmons boards in Memorial House where he has had to adapt to new life and people around him. Uh, my res is fine. I like my host. You know, shout out to Memorial House. You know, um, yeah, I made new friends here. I made a lot of friends. It's easy to make friends here. Everyone's really friendly here. And missing my old friends, not as much. I don't think about it much anymore because I have such more new friends here. So, as well as being an important athlete, Simmons is a hard worker in the classroom and is realistic about his future. I can't go anywhere to school. If football doesn't work out for me, then you know I always have something to fall back on. School, education, I need to go to real life, get a real job. So that would be number two priority for me. Continuing his athletic endeavours, next term he will be playing for the varsity basketball team. You know what would be great right now? What? A nap. A nap would be great. I need one right now. But Probably finish this show though, eh? Yeah, we should. Well, instead of napping, let's have Yan Xu and Eduardo Alcantara Gonzalez talk about sleep and the teenage brain. Are we getting enough of it? What's keeping us from sleeping? How can we sleep better? Here's the story. For many, many years, getting good quality of sleep has become the major problem that troubles most of the high school students. Our first question is, how much time should a student sleep every day? Teenagers need a minimum of eight or nine hours sleep. But do most of students really feel that they get enough time to sleep every day? No. No. Absolutely not. How might a student feel during the day if they don't get enough time to sleep? Tired sometimes. Tired? You're really tired. Well, if they don't get enough sleep, they're not going to be very functional at school. They're going to have trouble studying. They're going to have trouble concentrating. As we know, prefect are important roles on our campus. And usually they have more work than other students need to be done to make sure the entire SAC community is on the right track. Would that majorly affect their sleep? In a school like St. Andrews, where so many things are going on, it is very difficult to get enough sleep and enough rest. What about those students who are standing top 10 rank in their grade? Right, if you want to get a good mark, you have to study hard. You have to persevere. And you have to study every day, every night. From different perspective, what might be some major factor that causes students don't get enough time to sleep? I think that students push themselves too hard. The tendency is to try to stay up a little bit later in order for them to accomplish everything that they weren't able to finish throughout the course of the day. 
And the second one, I think, is sleep cycles. I think that students would be much better off if they set a timer as a countdown timer when they went to bed so they could wake up in 90-minute cycles. That's what I do when I sleep, so you wake up on the high end of the cycle so you actually feel refreshed. What are some other good things we can do to improve our sleep? Well, you shouldn't go to bed hungry. You should limit your, your screen time, computer time, TV time prior to bed. Uh, exercise regularly, but not just before bed. Um, and when I say you shouldn't go to bed hungry, uh, sometimes it helps to have a little snack as opposed to a huge meal, okay? Avoid stimulants like coffee, tea, uh, Coca-Cola, any, any drinks that might have caffeine in them. It's also good to establish a regular pattern. So if you're having to get up early every day from Monday to Friday, and then you sleep in until 12 or 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday and Sunday, it really throws your clock completely off. It doesn't mean you have to get up at 7 o'clock on a Saturday and Sunday, but maybe adjust that a little bit so you're not sleeping you know, through the whole morning. So your body does react better when there's a, a pattern. Okay. Um, what else could be done? Uh, you know, if you're, if you're having trouble sleeping, then maybe reading a book just before bed can help calm your mind, try and relax a little bit. Yoga helps. That's it. Thank you very much. Homecoming is always a special time for the extended school community to get back together and remember the good times they had on campus. Despite the chilly and wet weather, school spirit was strong. Quinton Cochran and I spoke with a few alumni about their experience. Here is what they had to say. For some students, it's just another sports day, but for hundreds of SAC old boys, it's a homecoming reunion. Students from last year and students up to 30 years ago showed up on Saturday, October 3rd to witness some great sporting events. An activity-filled day was showcased a month ago for everyone in the SAC community to catch up, eat some great food, and cheer on their fellow Andrians. With old boys reminiscing on their past memories on campus, we caught up with some of them to recollect their times. So how did St. Andrews shape you for your career? Um, I would have to say it uh, helped me become more business oriented. Uh, thinking about it in the, in the business that I'm in right now, it made me more professional and it made me approach people from a more respectful um, angle. Give all the credit back to Mr. Shields and uh, Mr. <laughs> Ramon because they taught me to, to respect people and all of the lessons that I've learned in the future are the ones that I learned at SAC. I feel university didn't teach me as much as St. Andrews did in the long run. The school. I really didn't rejoin the school until my uh, my older brothers, uh, younger sons started coming. Andrew and Eric, and now and now my son comes here. So, yeah, it's amazing how it all came around. It's great. Awesome. Um, what were your greatest memories uh, from your time at SAC? Oh, man. Great night. Mm, I was <laughs> as we were driving in. I was I was saying um, the biggest thing I miss is the is the runs that we do. Like when we start on the on the quad and go all the way around twice. I think yeah. back when I did it, I thought it kind of sucked. But yeah. like now thinking back it was so much fun because we all got our shirts from our houses we were all representing and it was all good fun it wasn't really competitive it was just for school it's a tradition yeah. but regardless it was really excellent I love it for sure overall SAC homecoming was a great success and an excellent day for families and Andrians of all ages let's go Saints yeah. Yeah. as term one comes to a close the St. Andrews campus will be gearing up for some major school events in the coming months Next week, our School Remembrance Day ceremony will take place on Wednesday, so don't forget to support our veterans and donate money for a poppy. Also happening this month are Holiday Hero, St. Andrew's Day celebrations, and Movember. Term 2 sports trials and sign-ups will also be happening, so don't forget to check the news and grade conferences for the latest news. That's it for our show today. In the coming weeks, check out our YouTube channel for more stories and archive shows like this one. Thanks for watching SAC Today. I'm Tarun Sethi. And I'm Ayogan Rami. See you again next time.